Right guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm just going to do a, um, a little segment on barrel adjusters. Someone asked me, they was having trouble with barrel adjuster um, on their bike, I can't remember exactly who it was. And they just wanted uh, an explanation of how they work, etc. So I thought, why not, I'll do a video. So, we'll get into it. Right, so, here we have a rear derailleur. I'm just taking a R7000 Shimano as an example, you see the barrel adjuster on there. Now, if you're replacing a cable or you're putting a new cable in, just make sure that the barrel adjuster is just off the bottom. It's not done up tight so you can't move it um, clockwise anymore. So just back it off a little bit off the bottom before you put the cable through and just remember if you're replacing a cable to do that so don't leave it where it was set before and just put a cable through because then you won't have the fuller range of adjustment you need to with the cable if you put a new cable through make sure you remember to adjust the bar adjuster just off the bottom and then run your new cable through from your shifter and then you'll have the full range of movement and uh, Basically, they're all they're all the same. The barrel adjusters they consist of the outside part. If I just take this out completely, you've got the outer plastic part. I mean, they come in different different. Uh, they could look like they could look like that, but they're all basically the same. Just got the plastic outside. Then you've got an inner like so. This happens to be a metal inner. And then you've got a spring, which comes off. So you just put the spring back on there, locate that into the slots there. And obviously the spring loaded, like so, as you can see. And then that just screws, you push down on it, then you can screw it back in to your derailleur, and that mounts it back on there. Now, you can also get inline ones that's just an inline barrel adjuster, you'll find them up by your handlebars of the bike mainly, these ones will look like so and it's basically sort of the same principle to make the adjustment you just turn it like so and it adjusts the cable and all it's doing is by adjusting it as you can see if it's screwed right in like so it's so long like that and then when you adjust it so I adjust it fully out just wind it out it's now that long so you've got with these inline ones like so they're basically the same thing you just take out the end inside it's got the metal piece the same with a spring in it, it's just like an elongated version of the one that come off the that came off the uh, rear derailleur. Same thing, spring loaded, same as this. Same thing. It's just a longer version of that. That's all it is. But the inline one just got the plastic on the end because it's not mounting to a derailleur, it's going in line in the cable. So all we do is push down, push down on it and then screw that in back in. And then you've got Imagine your outer cable is just going in the end, like so, like by both ends, like that. Then your inner cable's running through, and some people adjust them because they're up by the handlebars, and you can adjust them obviously on the rear derailleur as well. But same thing, if you was uh, putting this, running a new cable through, just make sure you haven't left it how it was set originally. It could have been set when it was set up last time, it could be set wound right out like so, with the metal piece sticking right out. So you've just got to remember to wind that back in. Just wind it all the way in. Like so, and just back it off slightly. And then you're ready to run your new cable through. And all it's doing is by, by turning any bar adjuster, it's just lengthening. 
So all it's doing is getting longer. So it's pushing the, obviously in this case, it's pushing the outer cable that way to the left and it's taking the slack out of the cable. It takes the slack out of the urea cable. So we go back to rear derailleur because most of the time you're making adjustments they're more likely using the barrel adjuster on the rear derailleur. So I'll just screw that back in there like so. Now when you've got your outer cable going in like that to the rear derailleur obviously you have your cable stop on the end of here and it fits snugly in there when you've put your cable on and you've clamped it up you run it through and you put it through your pinch bolt on your derailleur and you've pulled on it tight and then you've pinched and nipped it up in place then when you go to make your adjustments with the barrel adjuster because you find your chain is skipping on whichever gears sometimes down the bottom, sometimes in the middle of the cassette it's just skipping um, and you can't get it set that's when you use your barrel adjuster and it's normally because you haven't got enough tension on the cable so by turning this anti-clockwise you can see the piece coming up out of here the metal piece in this case in the middle is coming up and it's pushing up it's pushing your outer cable up where it's like that so it's shortening the distance there so therefore it's tightening up it's taking the slack any minute amount of slack out of your cable just enough so as your chain then sits nicely on your sprockets so you can index it properly it's normally because obviously you can't by pulling it by hand and then nipping the pinch bolt up you can never get quite enough you can be lucky sometimes and you won't even need to use a barrel adjuster you can get the right amount of tension on it straight away but but mainly it's because you haven't got enough tension on the cable when you're pulling on it like I said you snug the bolt up um, that's what it is so it's just taking the slack out of the, the cable a minute amount of slack and obviously that's shortening it so it's taking slack out and then when you wind it back in clockwise and the metal piece then disappears back down inside the plastic that'll be lengthening it down so that means the cable's going slacker and then obviously like I said wind it anti-clockwise the metal bit comes up proud of the plastic like so then you're shortening so all it's doing like I said is pushing up on the outer cable therefore and then it's this has the same effect on the inner cable by pushing up on the outer it's just uh, shortening it therefore it's tightening up the cable by a minute amount that you couldn't get by hand so that's how it's working on there and obviously you can get barrel adjusters down on say aluminium steel bikes you've got the barrel adjusters that are mounted on your uh, down tube as well and um, with the uh, Shimano rear drainers like so what you find is you say if you've got a um, R8000 or Durace rear derailleur people complain that they can't adjust them properly it's because this is all there is to it it's just a little piece of plastic I'll just remove it so you can see it like so this little piece of plastic there you're relying on this and you're relying on that tiny nib on the end of there like so and that tiny nib rests in that little cut out there so if that goes on there like so and that little like I said that little plastic nib sits in that little slot like so and then obviously it's got a spring on it as well so it would be spring spring loaded and then the outer piece then your outer piece like that goes over this plastic bit there like so and then you're adjusting it and you're wondering why 
your, the plastic piece is just spinning and it's having no effect on this thread whatsoever. You're holding it like that and this could be spinning and you're thinking why isn't it adjusting? Why isn't it not indexing anything? It's because that plastic nib like I showed has to be in that slot there. This is one little slot there that has to be sat in there and you have to hold it. That's why this is rubber. The outer piece, not hard plastic. It's slightly rubbery. So you crush it with your hand whilst trying to turn it and then the thread will turn as well. If you're not doing that, it's spinning, you're not doing anything, you're not adjusting anything. That's why the Durace R9100 and the R8000 is like this. So I did a video on it before, you're better off you change it for one of the older style ones like the 6800 um, or 5800 or if you can find one, you can use the one off of a 105 R7000. This uses the, the old style ones like they used to have on the R8, um, on the 6800 or the 5800, the older style mech. This uses a proper one where you've got the proper metal piece there with the four lugs on it that corresponds with the four bits inside there. So you just push it in, locate it in there. And like I said, you can just turn it. You don't have to worry about crushing it or doing anything with your hand. You just turn it. And whenever you turn the black plastic bit, it turns the thread. So therefore, it's making the adjustment, the fine adjustments, as it should do. You haven't got to worry about trying to hold on to it. And it's not doing anything. And this, that and the other. It's easier just to fit one of these. And it does it exactly when you turn it. It is turning. There's no, there's no half measures with it. So you can use one of these, like I said. Or you can use one of the other ones. And there's a barrel adjuster in line, as you can see there. That happens to be in line with the rear derailleur. So they just fit in line. And then some bikes have, like I said, a barrel adjuster there on both sides. On the dam tube, you can have a barrel adjuster there, or you can have them in the line. Like I said, Jock just showed in line. Some of them come with them there, the screw threads are in there for the barrel adjusters on the steel bikes or even on aluminium bikes. Um, so they just mount in line, very simple, you just put them in line like so. This also applies to barrel adjusters on brakes as well, on the mechanical brakes. When you turn the adjuster, like so. pads going closer to the rim like that and then when you turn it clockwise the brake pads then will be getting further away from the rim like that the same as it applies like I said the cables just being um, the outer cables resting in there with the stop on it and it's shortening it or lengthening it so, same applies to those. Right, so that's a road rear derailleur. Like I said, it's got the barrel adjuster there. And if you're talking mountain bike rear uh, derailleurs, then there's no barrel adjuster on them, as you can see there. So, the barrel adjuster on these, being as it's a uh, mountain bike derailleur, is up on the uh, on the shifter itself is the same principle, it's just mounted on the shifter, it works exactly the same. Just just minute um, adjustments on the actual cable, taking out the slack. But it works the same, exactly the same principle. They're just there instead on, on the shifter body. Right guys, there's a quick look at the barrel adjusters for you anyway, and how they work, they're very simple. So if you've got a rear um, derailleur that needs indexing, then you can go ahead and adjust your barrel adjuster up. There's no need to have a bike riding along and one of your gears is um, slipping slightly or it's just out, out of adjustment slightly, then it could be just your barrel adjuster just wants a, um, a couple of clicks or, or a quarter of a turn, that's all it'll be. So there's no need to be frightened to actually adjust it um, because they work, they're so simple. Um, you may find that your um, 
bike has one up by the handlebars as well that you could turn it does the same thing so there's no point in trying to turn one and then turn the other one at the same as well you're just over complicating it really you just need the one like I said on the rear derailleur you'll get away with one on there you don't even need one on the front the uh, front mech itself that doesn't need one um, some bikes they have them in line um, and you can make some adjustments if you have to but um, I never fit them to a front a front uh, mech there's no need um, but I say it's personal preference if your bike's got one you can utilize it or you may find they're on the down tube even um, there so you can adjust them there but like I said if you adjust it there there's no point in trying to turn that one and then turning the one also down on the rear derailleur um, because you just over complicate you're moving two of them then so you just stick with moving one um, and that should do the trick I will say they're ever so easy to adjust so there's no need to be frightened of adjusting them so if you found the uh, video helpful in any way to you give it a thumbs up remember subscribe to the channel for more cycle related content until the next one ride safe and I'll see you then